WGPR Detroit HD2. You're watching WHPS, Highland Park, Detroit. WVIE 107.3 FM Charlotte, Amalia, Virgin Islands. The views and opinions expressed on the following show are not necessarily the views and opinions of WHPS, its affiliates, management, or sponsors. for joining me once again for can we talk about it where we talk about that elephant in the room uh before i begin i want to give a shout out to my husband charles stinson i love you so much sweetie you mean the world to me um my uh son robert boy thank you robert for loving me and being with me and keeping me and keeping me in your prayers and spending time with me you're a really good son and i love you so much for that um, I actually want to give a shout out to um, Tamika Nolan. Hey, Tamika! Miss Tamika Nolan, I met her, I think it was last Monday I did my show. And um, I had went to go get some papaya juice and some other stuff. And um, I seen her and we talked for a little bit. And she was pretty cool and everything. So I just wanted to say hi to her. Hey, Miss Nolan. Hey, Tamika. So uh, I want to give a shout out to my son, Donnell. I love him so much. Thank you so much for being my son. Uh, my daughter, Robin, I love you. Uh, my daughter, Dale, I love you guys so much with all my heart. Uh, I pray nothing but good things for you guys. And uh, on to the show. Um, today... I want to talk about something happened to me Friday and it kind of, it kind of, it didn't really get to me until earlier today. And I had to call a family member and just tell them to lose my number, basically. Um, you know, by me being a Christian, you know, a lot of people, you know, they be wanting to sell their food stamps. And, you want to buy these? No, I don't. I don't think the Lord would want me to do that. So uh, one of my family members I hadn't talked to in a while had called and was like, oh, yeah, I've been looking for you. I got $150. I got $300 worth of food stamps for one fee. I said, girl, you know I don't do that. So she hung up on me and never called me back. I tried to, like, you know, just, like, you know, I'm just not going to call her back. But I'll be trying to be there for my cousin sometimes. And she and she's she's ratchet and she just gets on my nerves. But I still try to be there for her. So what I want to tell my cousin is you go to Blazers. Don't you ever call me again with this mess. When I tell somebody that I'm not going to take out of some children's mouths just to make sure you get something in your some paper in your hand. You go to Blazers with that. I am not a disrespectful person. I try to abide by the law spiritually as well as physically people in the stores you want to buy some stamps no don't ask me i'm not into that then they want to get an attitude and try to shame you into buying things my cousin didn't do that she never called me back i texted her and, and gave her a piece of my mind but i just want to let a lot of you people know if you don't want to buy stamps food stamps from folks you know, this is what makes me upset about not not all people that sell their food stamps. Because some people, they have to do it to make ends meet. I understand that, but I'm not going to be privy to it. But there's a lot of you that take this government money, which soon you're not going to have it. You're not. Trust and believe what I tell you. You take food stamps that belong to your children. Then you, you sell them out. And buy drugs with them. I'm so ashamed. 
of a lot of my sisters and brothers that have children. And when they get these food stamps, they sell them. Then their children are hungry and you want to whoop your child. I've seen this. Because now you're out of your mind. There's no food in the house and your child is telling you they're hungry. Shame on you. Shame on you. How dare you? A, a bunch of you women and men ain't worth the rubber that's on the, on the bottom of your shoe. For the way you guys treat your children. I think it's just a hot mess how we're going through all of this in this day and age. And the women I'm talking about, they're like in their 40s, 50s, and 60s. I feel like once you get past a certain age, actually, once you get to 30, 35, some type of light is supposed to come on. You're supposed to come to your senses and you're supposed to grow up. Some folks will never grow up. They will always live off the government. And these are the people I call slackers. People that don't want to get a job. They don't want to work. They want to lay around the house all day and have babies. And just rake in state money. Guess what, hunties? That money is getting ready to go. Guess where it's going? To the immigrants. You women don't have a clue, a clue of how this country is being ran. And if they took your money from you, if they took their money from you, you wouldn't have a clue on how to make any. Because you don't, for one, you don't have good sense. You don't have a talent. And the talent that you do have, you can't use it legally. Not unless you go to Vegas on the strip. Men and women, grandmothers and grandfathers too. These children are depending on you. It hurts my heart to see you vindictive, low-down, dirty Negroes taking out your own children's mouth. How dare you? Who do you think you are? I know you think you the man or you the woman when you get these food stamps. That, that's, saying, that's not saying a lot about you. You, you. you think very lowly of yourself if every time you get a government check or food stamps, you the man or you the woman. You think very lowly of yourself. I've said this before and I'm going to say it again. Uh, I was, I'm a recovering addict. And I mean, I was in the game. I've done a lot of things that I'm not proud of. Uh, the thing about me is God was so good to me when I was younger. I had rheumatic fever and I didn't know I had rheumatic fever. And uh, it caused me to have really bad heart problems. I, uh, they had to um, repair my mitral valve. I had to get a ring around my heart. And now I got other valves that's not doing good. And I've had like 11 surgeries on both of my feet. I've had, all, I've had other surgeries also. I said that to say this. Every day when I walk in pain, sometimes my body is racked with pain and I get up. I don't get government anything. And I know that if I apply for it, I can get it. But if I work for it, it'll make me feel just that much better. Now, who are you to walk around here? You're healthy, healthy as a horse. I mean, healthy as a horse. You're doing it big every time you get food stamps, first of the month checks, and whatever little check you get from ADC, and you think you all that. I'm here to tell you that you're not all that. You're not. The Lord said, what you do to the least of mine, you do to me. So when you take food out your children's mouth, guess what you're doing? You're making a lot of strikes against yourself with the Lord. I always talk about the Christians. I, I'm talking about uh, just worldly people right now. But, you know, we, you know, say, well, I, I, the funniest thing in the world is to hear a worldly person say, 
well, God watches over me. Then he goes off in this rant with MF, B's, and this, that, and the other. God is not listening to you. I bet you one thing, God got my back, you MF, blah, blah, blah. What, what is that? God is not hearing you. That's real stupid, my Negroes. You can't sit up and speak on the goodness of the Lord and then turn around with all this profa uh, profane language and have God's name in it. You're cursing yourself when you do that. God will never be damned. Quit saying that. We don't know that the things that come out of our mouth could curse us. The things we do could curse our children from years to come. Some of you children, I can understand why, you know, you like, I don't want to be bothered with my mom and my daddy when I was younger. They did this, they did that. Welcome to the club, boo. My mom and my daddy, they did some stuff too. That didn't make me stop loving them. Yeah, I didn't realize that my mom, no matter what my mom did that, that I did not like in my life, she was still my mother, and I love her. But some of you parents may not have children that may be as loving as I was to my parents. Some children just cut their parents off and go off and make a life for them, like the baby. Now, I'm not sure if it was his mother or not, but, you know, the baby, and I'm not speaking on him. I'm actually speaking on his mother. They say his mother is an addict, but he won't do nothing to help his mother. And that's what I mean. Because of the way, because of all the things he's seen in her when he was growing up, he didn't like anything about what he's seen. That's what's going on with your children right now. They don't like anything that they're seeing out of you. They don't want to have anything to do with you. If they had their way, they'd get as far away from you as possible. You better pay attention to how you treat your children and the, and the examples that you set for them. Because truth be told, <clears throat> some of you dang on, some of your children are way more smarter than you guys. You didn't want to go to school when your mama told you to go to school. So you dropped out, what, sixth, seventh grade? I think that is terrible. I'm not talking about back in slave days and, you know, you had to drop out and take care of your parents. Those are those are gems of stories to be told to folks today. But ain't nobody listening to that. But you now. You don't have an education. You can't read. You can't write. But you can count money. And you can hustle all day long. What is that showing your child? That you're ignorant, lazy, and don't want to do anything more than what you're doing with your life right now. And that's the way you want them to be. And some children look at their parents like, I will never be that way. I was one of those children. I will never be like that. Like I said, I had my downfalls and I went through my crack addiction and uh, been abused. And I've lived in the street in dumpsters. So I know what I'm talking about. So I can talk to you about this. You're 50, 60 years old. You don't have any real estate of your own. You're renting or you're living with some man or woman. If they put you out, what are you going to do? Nothing. Live on the streets. Like in the Bible where it says, save yourself on this earth. You need to take care of yourself. You need to take care of yourself. I'm tired of you ratchet women and men taking food out your baby's mouths and getting all dressed up on Friday and Saturdays and you got your molester, your, your, your pedophile brother or somebody watching your children and they're just running amok with them. Take care of your children. Another thing I wanted to talk about. The government is terrible. If the government won't take care of his own, why are we, why are we um, going to war for a country that when we get back, you know, soldiers that lost limbs and they come back, they're not right because of all the things that they see and, 
and you come back and tell them to go to the veterans hospital and they got to pay for it. Why do soldiers have to pay for anything in the United States? America ought be ashamed of itself. All of these soldiers, all of these soldiers, Lord, help us, don't have a place to stay. They living in a hovel. They living in a place where it's, it's just a bed and a bathroom and it's pissy. America ought to be ashamed of itself. We got veterans barely making it. I'm going to tell you something. I I don't know why I'm so on this movie. I I've, I've been watching this movie Dead Presidents. It is I don't know what kind of spell it's got on me and this is what's making me talk about these uh soldiers. At the end of this movie Dead Presidents, well, at the beginning this young black man, and he wanted to go to the war. He went to the war when he came back, couldn't find a job, and you know, he was going through everything and he tried to rob a truck some of y'all seen in this, that, and the other with a couple other people. He ended up trading in one uniform, which was a uh, United States Marines uniform for a prison uniform because when he got back home, he couldn't find no work. He couldn't find nothing. So uh, Martin Sheen played the judge, and he asked, uh, I can't remember the guy's name, who played uh, Anthony Curtis or Curtis Anthony, whatever his name was, he asked him if he had anything to say. He said when he got back, Things was tough for him, and he had to do what he had to do to survive. And his judge was telling him that, you know, he was a decorated soldier in a special elite unit out there, and he had the uh, uh, Star of Valor or something like that, Silver Star of Valor. And the white man, who was a judge, said that he was in the, in the Marines too, and he was in, I think he said, the First or Second World War, and he said it was a real war which actually, again, downgraded the brother. And the point I'm trying to make is a white man can't put himself in a black man's shoes because they're already behind the eight ball before they're even born. So white folks, stop that. My white brothers and sisters, stop saying that black men, I'm not even talking about black sisters, that black men get the same uh, type of, the, le the playing field is leveled the same for both uh, nationalities. That's not true. You don't see a lot of white veterans on the street, but there are, they are there. And guess where they live at? In urban neighborhoods. Why would anybody want to serve in the Army and they're going to come home to nothing? Why would anybody want to fight for a country that makes them pay for their own medical, makes them pay for their own housing? They're fighting to keep this country together. They're fighting for the elitists. They're not really fighting for people like me and you. They have our people, Chinese too. There's Chinese Americans. There's uh, Chaldean Americans. These people go over here. But I bet you one thing, I bet you the Chinese and I bet you the, the Chaldeans, the Chaldeans, I, get, I bet you they get treated better than the black man do. Why? I, I can't understand, I cannot put my head around why there's so many uh, vets living in the streets, living in boarding houses, living in shelters. They have to pay the John Dingle Veterans Hospital. If you can afford it, you can go there. Veterans shouldn't have to pay for nothing, damn it. And I mean nothing. How dare the United States? You send them out there to look at all this blood, to kill or be killed. Their mind is not straight. Then if, if, if you can't do nothing for them, you just throw them in a crazy house, throw them somewhere and keep them doped up. All that money that the state is getting from for them to be there, you can give to them to get their life in order. But no, they don't want to do that. And this is how I feel. This is my opinion. Should not one black man join the army? If we're so bad, if we jump on everybody and, and we're the bullies, which is a lie, 
Why you want us in the army? So we can fight your battles for you? Just back in the days of the Confederate, uh, when um, when uh, slavery was, it was close to being abolished, and uh, they started letting the black soldiers in, and they said that if they found black regiments, they would kill the black regiments, and some of the black regiments had white commission, I mean, white officers and some black commission officers, and these people, the whole um, battalion would be killed because you were associated with uh, black skinned folks. But if it wasn't for black folks, y'all, the Confederate would have got us. Whenever something bad or hard goes down, you call on us to take care of it. I don't understand for somebody so barbaric, why would you send people and say, well, like they say, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, you can go to school, you can do this, you can do that. That ain't true. You may be able to get some, some credits to do something, but what are they going to give you when you get here? A lifetime medical? You have to remember, ladies and gentlemen, when these people go in um, the war, some of these people are young men just coming out of high school. They're just coming out of high school. They're still babies. So they're, they're growing into their manhood in a barbaric situation, in a barbaric uh, world. Then they come back to a civilized nation and they can't quite get it right. So first thing they want to do is either put them in jail or, or keep them drugged up. What is that? That's, that's a slap in the face to, to the flag and the men and the women who died for that flag, seeing how you're so hell-bent on the flag. The flag ain't because of the elites. The flag, is, the flag is because of the folks who died to protect this piece of land that don't even belong to nobody, actually, because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Everybody fighting over turf that don't belong to them. And you're using folks and not helping them after the fact. This is so sad to me. America, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Veterans shouldn't have to come out of pocket not one dime, one penny, one dollar to a bucket of big. I don't trust my government, and I don't think no black man should ever go to another uh, armed forces. I really don't. The way things are... You know, there and and when then when you get out, they want you to come back, do National Guard, and this, that, and the other. A lot of these folks that do the National Guard, and a lot of these, a lot of my white brothers that come back, they be wilding. They be what? They're straight up killers. Straight up killers. I'm not saying some of our black brothers ain't, but we not wired to kill like that. And they'll come home. Like uh, they had on Facebook some guy, he was in the army and a young uh, black boy was walking down the street. He come walking all up on him, pushing his weight around and talking to him all crazy. I don't know if they kicked him out the army or he went to jail, but he something should have happened to that man. Now, if y'all want, if my Caucasian brothers and sisters, if they want to go and 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 go off to war and because they got these commercials now where they showing these um they showing these young women uh well i want to do this and the mother's like why you say because you know it's important i need to do it okay well let becky and karen and all them going on over there we don't need to be fighting a war that Oh, not now, not now one of these wars, not now, yeah, I said that, not now one of these wars that the United States fought in had anything to do with black folks. Yeah, I said it. Then they trick our black men into feeling like, you know, you're some type of hero 
because you went to the army. No, you're not. You're a dunce. You're a dunce. Why are you fighting for something that you don't even know what you're fighting for? And that's the sad thing. A lot of these men go over here, they don't even know what they're fighting for. The Vietnam War, that wasn't our war. They were telling black men, this is not your war. But the white man kept saying it was a bunch of communistic bull crap, so don't listen to it. My brothers, my sisters, my black brothers, my black sister, the United States of America Armed Forces is not for you. My black brother, my black sister, the United States Army Armed Forces is not for you. So on that note, I love you guys with everything that's in me. You mean the world to me. Uh, tomorrow morning about 5.30, I'm going in to have some surgery. I'm kind of nervous about it. So you got those who, who want to pray good things for me, pray good things. Those who don't, I rebuke you. Don't pray for me. But uh, on that note, I love you so much. And until next time, stay strong and be strong.